In this video, we're going to talk about the PowerShell Universal module. The PowerShell Universal module is used for administering PowerShell Universal itself. It offers all kinds of commandlets for uh, creating scripts, schedules, invoking scripts, and returning information about your server. In this video, we're going to talk about the architecture of the module, how to authenticate using the module, some internal communication information about using the module from within PowerShell Universal, and then some common scenarios of using the module to install the PowerShell Universal server, invoke scripts, and set things like variables and schedules. The PowerShell Universal module comes pre-installed with PowerShell Universal. When you install PowerShell Universal using the MSI, you'll have the option to add the PS module path for the Universal folder into your local environment. This means that you'll be able to run PowerShell Universal commandlets without having to manually install the module yourself. If you do want to install it on a module that does not have the PowerShell Universal server installed, you can do so from the PowerShell gallery using install module name universal or install ps resource name universal. Now that we have the module installed, what we can do is we can start working with our PowerShell Universal server. We'll need to know the URL of the server and we'll need a way to authenticate against the server. Later in this video, we're going to go through all the different ways that you can authenticate against your PowerShell Universal server and how to configure those different ways to authenticate. What I want to do in this example is just use an app token that I've generated. So if I use connect PSU server, I can specify an app token and I'll paste that long string into the app token value. From there, I'm going to specify a computer name. The computer name is the URL of your PowerShell Universal server. It will assume that you're on HTTP if you didn't put it in there, but we're just going to use HTTP localhost 5000 to dictate that we are connecting to this PowerShell Universal server that's running on my local machine. Running this command will return some information about your PowerShell Universal server and your current user's um, status. So as you can see, it's running in server mode. I'm logged in as the administrator. One-way git sync is not enabled. Manual git mode is not enabled. I have the administrator role and I have a built-in role. Because I used connect PSU server, all the PSU commandlets after this will now no longer require uh, authentication. So I can use get PSU app to return information about the apps that are in my PSU server. As you can see, this is the basic PowerShell Universal app documentation that you get with every PowerShell Universal installation. So there's a whole bunch of commandlets for working with all different types of PowerShell Universal resources inside the PowerShell Universal module. Uh, later in this video, we're going to look at some of the common scenarios that you'll use the module commandlets for. Now that we've looked at how to connect to your PowerShell Universal server, let's look at different ways to authenticate against it. I've been showing examples of how to use app tokens. App tokens are JWT web tokens that you can generate inside PowerShell Universal to provide way, a way to authenticate using a bearer token. So the idea here is that I can generate an app token for myself or another user, depending on my role, and then I can grant that to the app token. I can specify a time for that app token to expire, or I can revoke that app token at any time. As you can see here, I've created an app token for my own user. Uh, if I were to create a new app token, I would click Create Application Token, select the identity of the user, select the role I'd like to grant to this app token. Because I'm an administrator role, I have these options. If you are not an administrator role, you won't have as many options. You're going to only be able to uh, generate an app token for yourself with the roles that are assigned to you. So I'm going to select this, and then finally, I'm going to set an expiration time. So I can de decide whether or not I want this to be valid for 30 days, uh, 60 days, 90 days, or never. So I'll just stick with the default. Once I click OK, you'll see the app token is generated. This app token can be used with the PowerShell Universal module. It can also be used to authenticate against the PowerShell Universal Management API, as well as other resources inside your environment, like your own custom APIs. So from here, I can either copy this text, or I can copy uh, the text of the app token um, with a copy button. If you have enhanced security enabled for your application tokens, it's a setting that you can enable inside PowerShell Universal, uh, you will only be able to copy it when you're looking at the page right now. And if you revisit the page later, you'll no longer be able to copy the app token. The default uh, behavior is to allow you to copy this app token whenever you'd like, though. So I am going to copy that app token, go over to my PowerShell Universal um, terminal here, and call connect PSU server with my new app token, and you'll see that I am now connected to PowerShell Universal.
In addition to being able to use app tokens for PowerShell Universal, you can also use basic authentication. Basic authentication sends your username and password to PowerShell Universal uh, via the basic header for the authorization header. Um, and what that does in PowerShell Universal is it actually invokes the form authentication. So similar to when you're using the admin console and you come to the login page such as this and you type in your username and password, it's the same authentication mechanism used there. So that actually uh, invokes several different types of authentication, um, depending on what you have configured inside PowerShell Universal. Um, the first being uh, local accounts. So in a default uh, installation of PowerShell Universal, you will have the administrator local account. This username and password is just stored inside the PowerShell Universal database, and um, it's just going to authenticate it with that. Um, secondly, you can also uh, invoke your forms authentication method. So there's no configuration here unless you've um, you know, set up your authentication method. Uh, if you look at the default here, um, it's just going to return bad username and password, but you could have your authentication script do something like communicate with Active Directory or some other uh, authentication provider uh, via a PowerShell script, and the command that will actually invoke this um, authentication path in addition to the local account authentication path. Uh, finally, um, you can also enable um, native login. So native login will actually perform a login on your native domain. Um, and you can dictate what that domain is if you are um, in a multi-domain environment. Um, but in this case, it's actually going to just do a log on user for the user that's logging in if this is enabled. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So rather than using an app token, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to call connect PSU server with a credential. So First of all, I'm going to create my credential. I'm just going to use the standard get credential commandlet. And then I'm going to create admin admin. This is my um, local account username and password. Now that I have that stored inside the credential object, from there, I can actually call connect PSU server, passing that credential object to the credential parameter, specify my computer name, and I will be connected to PowerShell Universal without having to generate an app token uh, for this connection. Finally, we'll look at how to authenticate against the PowerShell Universal server using default credentials or Windows credentials using the PowerShell Universal module. So Windows credentials are uh, available if you enable a Windows authentication. So this is also referred to as negotiate authentication where um, the Windows server will actually send credentials via a header um, to log in as your local Windows user. Uh, you'll see this in single sign-on services um, for on-premises um, installations of applications. So PowerShell Universal supports this, and all we need to do is add our Windows authentication method and get it enabled in order to get that user um, in, uh, integrated inside to PowerShell Universal. So now what I'm going to do is actually go out to my command terminal here, and I'm going to call connect PSU server with use default credentials and then specify the computer name uh, parameter. So use default credentials will actually um, you know, provide those uh, user credentials to the PowerShell Universal server uh, where I will then log in. And now you'll see that I'm logged into PowerShell Universal, but this is a little different than the previous logins that I've had. Because I haven't configured anything in terms of authorization for this user, while I can authenticate, I don't have any roles and I don't have a built-in role. So you can see my roles are empty and my get, um, or my, uh, my roles list is empty and built-in role is false. So now if I were to do something like get PSU app, while I was able to connect, I actually cannot call this because I do not have the permissions to actually uh, access um, the PSU app. I could go into PowerShell Universal, grant this particular user or this user's groups access to uh, the PowerShell Universal management API um, or resources inside PowerShell Universal to grant them access um, there, and then the command line would work. Let's take a look at managing connections in your PowerShell Universal module environment. By default, when you use connect PSU server, what it's going to do is it's actually going to use the process scope for this connection, meaning that all run spaces inside this particular process will use this same connection information. In most scenarios, this is fine uh, for like a PowerShell console such as this. We can use things like get PSU app to return our values. But if you're running this inside something like PowerShell Universal that uses multiple run spaces with different types of user authentication, you may want to specify a different scope for your connection. When you're connecting to a PowerShell Universal server, you can use the scope parameter and then specify either process or run space. 
RunSpace will use just the current RunSpace's um, connection for this uh, run space rather than using it across the process, isolating it to that particular run space rather than sharing it across the entire process. This is useful for things like APIs and apps that spin up multiple run spaces that may have different users accessing those different run spaces at different times. Now that we've talked about accessing PowerShell Universal remotely using the Universal module, we're going to talk a little bit about accessing PowerShell Universal um, internally from within PowerShell Universal. You may want to execute scripts from other scripts, execute scripts from your apps or APIs, gather information about your PowerShell Universal server in your scripts, or do things like create new schedules or update variables within your scripts inside PowerShell Universal. All of these things require access to the PowerShell Universal management APIs. The way that PowerShell Universal is um, configured is that PowerShell Universal is a web server that runs and exposes uh, web server APIs for the Universal module to connect to. By default, PowerShell Universal runs in what we call the strict mode. The strict mode requires that all, um, all management API calls through the PowerShell module go through the front end of the web server. This means using the front end connection here between the PowerShell server and the Universal server. So even if the PowerShell Universal um, command is running within the PowerShell Universal server, it's going to go and uh, call from the outside address. So it's going to call from whatever address that you access PowerShell Universal remotely. The reason for this is that then we can ensure that all the same authorization and authentication processes run uh, as you would be running from a remote connection. It simplifies everything in that regard, but it kind of um, complicates it in terms of uh, how a user accesses uh, the PowerShell Universal commandlets within PowerShell Universal. So there's um, a couple of configuration options that you can enable inside PowerShell Universal that we'll talk about in a little bit. And one of those is uh, enabling either permissive or integrated communication for the PowerShell Universal module. If you use the permissive mode, you can use both of these communication methods. Either you can go via the front end URL that you would access PowerShell Universal remotely, still use all the same authentication and authorization policies that you would, but you can optionally use the back end gRPC um, channel um, from host processes into the PowerShell Universal server. This bypasses a lot of the authentication and authorization, um, but is solely uh, available for scripts that are running inside PowerShell Universal. So depending on your security stance in terms of your PowerShell Universal environment, you may want to stick with the strict um, communication method, but in a lot of organizations, it may not make sense and it may just be easier to uh, enable either integrated or uh, permissive mode to communicate against the, B the backend gRPC channel. So we're gonna dive into what those uh, behaviors look like uh, in a demo right now. In this first example, we're gonna look at the strict security model. The strict security model ensures that you always use some sort of authentication to communicate with the PowerShell Universal commandlets. So in this example, I have API security.ps1. Uh, it's just a script that calls another script named child.ps1. That child script doesn't do anything, it just outputs nothing. Um, but I'm also outputting the PSU security model, which is a built-in variable inside PowerShell Universal that will show what my current security model is. If I manually run this script right now, what you're gonna see is that it will be able to successfully run this script. And you may be asking yourself, why can I run this script without having to provide something like an app token if the strict security is on? The reason that I can is that um, I am interactively working with the PowerShell Universal Admin Console. Because of that, I can get the security context from that Admin Console user. So because I'm a, an administrator, I have the administrator role, it's going to pass that on through down into the invoke PSU script to ensure that I can call this script. Where this begins to become a problem are things like schedules. So as you can see here, I have an uh, API security.ps1 schedule that just runs every hour. And if I were to invoke that with the scheduler, this is actually going to trigger the scheduler as a background job that is not associated with my user. What you'll notice is that um, that script has run, but it ran with an error. And we actually go view that job. We'll see the output that PSU uh, security model was strict, and it wasn't able to resolve the um, dynamic parameters for the commandlet because it's uh, unauthenticated. 
because the scheduler doesn't actually have any kind of role or anything like that, it can't actually specify um, who is running the script, and that is why the commandlet fails. Uh, similar to that, um, you can also have this problem where you, you have an app. So for example, I have this app with authentication disabled. If I were to um, open this app, what you'll notice is that I'm authenticated, but we're actually going to open a in private window. And I can still access this app, but I have no user account. If I click run script here, uh, you'll see I get the same error that I'm unauthenticated. I can't run this script because it doesn't know who is trying to run this script. That's because the strict security model is enabled. If I actually go back to my app here, and as you can see, I still have the run script button, but I'm actually logged in as the admin and I click run script, it will actually run the script successfully. In the background, it ran the script. We didn't see the error pop up because it knows that I am the admin user also uh, inside the app. So this holds true for anywhere that you're calling invoke PSU script from within PowerShell Universal, including um, APIs as well. I've reconfigured my PowerShell Universal server to run in the permissive API security model. So when permissive mode is enabled, uh, effectively, I can use the um, strict mode if I don't specify dash integrated on the commandlets, um, or I can continue to, or, or I can specify dash integrated to use the integrated mode um, to bypass all the authorization. So in my API security script, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add dash integrated uh, into my call here. Uh, it saved my script. I'm going to run it. And you'll see that it executes just like it did before, where I actually have permissive mode set now. Uh, it started my script just fine. But now if I go to schedules, and I actually start this schedule with the trigger here, I go to jobs. You'll notice rather than failing this time inside the schedule, it actually succeeded. And that's because I used the integrated switch. And you'll notice a little difference here. Um, so you can see I was manually run by admin here. Um, and inside my subscript, I was uh, manually run by admin. In the one that was scheduled, so this one was started uh, on the schedule start, if I expand this, you'll see that there is no indication that this was run by admin because it was just started by the PowerShell Universal server itself and it has no identity or roles. I've reconfigured my server into integrated mode. Integrated mode disables all the integrated security that you need to use for your PowerShell Universal module. So now you can call all the PowerShell Universal commandlets without having to worry about app tokens or who's calling the script. Um, in some environments, this be totally fine for your configuration. Um, so now, if you go look at my uh, API security script here, you'll see that I have PSU security model, invoke PSU script, and then the name, but no integrated switch here. So now when I run my script, uh, similar to the other two examples, you'll see that uh, it is now integrated and I was able to run the script successfully uh, without having to specify any app tokens or the integrated switch. Similarly, if I run my schedule through the scheduler and we go to our jobs, you'll see that it was also successful in the scheduler without the integrated switch because now it's just assuming the integrated switch for all commandlet calls inside PowerShell Universal. If there is an identity present, it will still pass around the identity information. So as you can see here, um, I ran this script manually as admin, which also ran the child script uh, as admin. So it knows what user is still running it, so you still get the audit history, uh, but it doesn't enforce any of the role-based access or authorization on those scripts being run from within PowerShell Universal. In this video, we looked at the PowerShell Universal module and how to connect it and use it within PowerShell Universal itself. The module itself has tons of commandlets for managing pretty much everything inside PowerShell Universal. You'll be able to invoke scripts, set up resources, and get information about your PowerShell Universal server on the command line or from within scripts inside PowerShell Universal.